When you take a look at these two clips, which side has your attention? Now, if you said the one on the right, you looked at the wrong clip. There's a lot of things to consider about a foot pedal when it comes to TIG welding. And one of those things that you should consider is that you're not actually looking at it while you're welding. And that's usually why it's left out of a lot of people's welding videos. But since a lot of people ask me about the foot pedal and want me to show more of it, here's a dedicated video all about how to operate this thing, what it does, and well, everything else I can think to teach you about a foot pedal. I'm Justin, welcome to Weld Coach. It's Weld Coach, your personal welding instructor, anywhere. The foot pedal is a little confusing and kind of tricky for beginner TIG welders when they're just starting out. And as a result of that, for the last almost a decade, I've had routine requests of people saying, could you include a shot of your foot operating the pedal? And the reason that I don't is kind of best explained in this next set of clips, asking the same question again. Which side has your attention the most? This one should be intuitive if you've ever operated an automobile, but we don't stare at our feet while we're driving. Instead, your eyes tell your feet what to do. And that's why in the opening set of clips, you should have been staring at the weld because the weld tells you everything you need to know about it. If you were concentrating on the foot pedal, then you flat out missed the weld. Operating your foot pedal is a lot like driving a car. You're not actually staring at your feet while you're moving down the road, you're actually staring at what's in front of you and that tells your feet what to do. Your eyeballs are connected to your feet. When you need to speed up, you step a little bit more. When you need to slow down, you let off a little bit. When you need to stop, you take your foot completely off the accelerator and step on the brake. Welding with a foot pedal is pretty much the exact same thing. You need more, you step on it more. You need less, you step on it less. You need to stop, you take your foot completely off. Welding is all about actively making corrections as you weld. It's not about following some steps and some settings charts and stuff like that that somebody recommends, hoping that you'll get a passing or nice result out of it. I'm, in other words, each time I go in to add a drop of filler to my pool, I ask the question, does this weld look correct? If the answer is yes, I add my drop, I move forward and I repeat. If the answer is yes again, I do it again and again until I am finished or if the answer is no. If the answer is no because something doesn't look right or it's not working right, I make the correction right then and there. When I show people what my foot does while I weld, they usually try to mimic my movement by wiggling their foot around or tapping their toe and hoping it's gonna make some secret method they are missing. But the truth is, that's just how fast I can make the corrections as I am welding. That's just what it looks like. And all of this takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of practice for you to be able to look, analyze, correct, and process all of that. But the other thing here is I don't necessarily have to have that freedom. I can run with a foot pedal at more of a set or static type of amperage rating. An example of that is a stainless exhaust I recently welded from another shop on the Fabrication Series channel. I set the machine up so that my foot would be pegged to the floor or flat out full throttle until I was ready to taper off and reset. I controlled the weld with speed instead of amps. And in the case that something might have gone wrong or I got out of whack, I could back off and assess the situation and determine if I could adjust and keep going or if I had to cut bait and find a new approach. The major function a foot pedal serves is that it is a switch, which brings us into a big safety concern. The pedal will send a signal to the machine to fire up the arc, and it also sends a signal to the machine to shut it off. The most important thing to remember about this is the machines are stupid and only do what they're told to do. They don't know if you accidentally or intentionally stepped on the foot pedal. And that's how you get like, things like, you know, bright accidental arc flashes when your hood is up and you just happen to be staring right at it or your part will have a blowout because you weren't ready to and in place ready to weld it or maybe you get shocked. There's a lot of different things that can happen and it's all avoidable if you follow the main rule, which is your foot is nowhere near this pedal until you are ready to weld. Being ready to weld means that your hood is down and your torch is in place. Then, and only then, should you move your foot toward the pedal. You should always do it in that order. And then when you complete your weld, remove your foot completely, lift your hood if you wish, and then move your torch. If you follow that order, you'll also be in good practice of post-flowing, which is something you should be doing instead of just lifting up the torch. 
And speaking of which, let's talk about weld failures. When you're right in the middle of something, something goes wrong, or you dip the tungsten, or who knows, you Q-tipped it up, anything could happen. Simply take your foot off the pedal. Do not lift the torch, do not whip it away. I know it's counterintuitive because what you're staring at and holding is the thing that's making all the noise and all the heat, but the control of it is at your foot. So just remember, if anything goes wrong, simply take your foot completely off the pedal and then assess the situation later. Now between on, off, and full throttle is the range of the foot pedal or the range of the machine that you're using, which is how you control your weld. Most people in the beginning have a pretty hard time controlling it because they're not using the range. In other words, if you just smash this sucker all the way to the floor, or if you just put it to one position and leave it there, something we call deadlocking, you're going to have a whole lot of problems in the beginning trying to control your weld because it's not being used. You're not actually using the range of that. The range is usually set by following the general rule of one amp per thousandth of an inch of material thickness. So when you barely step on the pedal and it initiates the arc, that low amperage range of where your machine operates in, which everything is different, in my case in this machine it's 5 amps, and full throttle, let's just say you dialed in 100 amps, then everything between starting and full throttle will be 95 amps of range. And you always want to target it because the smallest amount of movement will make a small amount of difference in your weld pool, and that will allow you to very finely tune your weld as you're welding it. One thing you definitely don't want to do is loading your pedal, which is kind of one of those fancy uh, welder sayings of just jacking the amperage all the way up to the maximum uh, because that's, you know, you have a foot pedal and you can find your way in between. And that's actually a really dumb idea. Now the theory behind it is that you don't have to worry about targeting your amperage or anything because if you have the full sweep of the, the whole machine, then you can just set your foot pedal to the right position and you don't even have to worry about that. But the problem with that is that you completely lose your fine control. Let's just take this for instance. The first part was welded at 65 amps on the foot pedal or range because the parts are 65 thousandths of an inch thick or just over 1.5 millimeters. Now the second part on the right was welded at 230 amps range on the foot pedal and you can see that all of my movements are at the low end of the pedal and the tiniest movement seems to be very exaggerated on the arc because I have no fine control over that range. But how do you know if that's the correct range or if your movement is enough or not enough or anything else like that? Well, you'll see it if you're paying attention to what's in front of you. It will show you if you have enough or not enough or anything in between or if it's just right. But one of the best ways you can find out, let's say on a joint or a new part that you've never worked on before, is to practice. You can set up something like some welding coupons from weldmetalsonline.com in a certain orientation or similar joint configuration as to the part that you're going to build. And we all know that practicing is how you get better at this, so take advantage of welding some flat coupons or playing around with it. You can also take a live class from a real life actual welding instructor in the comfort of your own home when you book a class over at weldcoach.com. Your instructor will give you advice and tips about using your foot pedal while you're still learning how to weld in real time. And if you didn't know, asking a professional in real time will get you answers and results way faster than asking any beginner's Facebook groups. So to sum it all up here, your foot pedal is the complete control of the machine. And if you have it targeted properly, then you'll have a much better time controlling it. If you see that your weld pool is getting super hot, back off until it is smaller and more where you like it. If you don't see a weld pool at all, well, you should step on the pedal more until you see what you need to see. And remember that if something isn't going right about your weld, correct it right then and there, or cut bait and take a fresh look at it. Just understand that your foot pedal does most of the work in controlling the machine. Like that's kind of where it's at. You just train your eyes to tell your foot what to do. And don't concentrate on your foot. I mean, the pedal, it's, it's just there. You just, you just use it. And that's about all I really have to say about foot pedals, I think. Oh, well, that's the end of the script. It's a short one. Hope to see you at wildcoach.com because I like teaching people. It's really fun. You got any questions about foot pedals? Maybe something I missed? You can comment. You can do the algorithmic like thing. Engage. Tell YouTube you like this kind of stuff. That's how it works. When you tell them you like it, they give you more of it until you tell him you don't like it. If you don't like it, don't push the thumbs down. Be cool.
but I hope you liked it. I really got to work on these outros.